Welcome to Sailing Your Boat, where we've been rebuilding this once wrecked schooner to eventually live on it and sail the seas. In the previous episode, you saw we started working on our rudder system. That's not going to get us anywhere if nothing is connected to the rudder itself. I don't know. I think it's going to work, but I'm like, everything can go wrong. That's what we're going to be working on this episode. Before we steer into it, you can support us completely for free by just hitting that like button or subscribing to our channel to not miss out on any new episodes. I am now in the engine room and it is not very cold here. Now it is time for us to finally start the connecting whatever the steering wheel is going on to that axle down to this chain which is actually coming down. It's literally a very thick motorbike chain which we're going to keep very oiled. That's going to be connected to a stainless steel wire which is going to run through a bunch of pulleys all the way to that transom over there. I'm very excited about all this. It's going to be super cool to be able to put the steering wheel back in place. One, because it looks epic and two, because we will literally have the rudder moving from where we should move the rudder. Really, really cool. So we're going to play around with this a bit decide where the pulleys have to go. Speaking of pulleys, we've had some very nice pulleys casted out of bronze. Um, they look very nice and they look very, very, very sturdy. They're gonna be fastened into the wall over here and onto the beams on top of us, guiding the rope or guiding the stainless steel wire all the way to the rudder. Okay, I think the easiest is now to come. We have one 20 meter piece of stainless steel wire, four millimeters thick, I believe. I'll write on the screen if it's not. Literally by connecting the chain through pulleys to the quadrant on the steering, on the rudder, it should work. The only thing I'm afraid of is the ratio of how many turns the uh, steering wheel turns as opposed to how much the rudder will turn. Will it be heavy? Will it be light? and so on, but that can all be changed in the future up on top of the deck. But this is probably gonna be the only bit that's gonna stay no matter what we do up there. I'm gonna work on the short one, which is starboard, which is practically going in one straight line to the transom. Then we'll work on the port one, which has to go behind the hatch of the engine room to the port side and then through the hole. The initial idea was to get one of these with the steel wire, of course, wrapped around it like so and hope, I was hoping that that would fit through one of these holes we get here of the chain. However, I think it's just too short. Good news is that the steel wire does fit through. Wire clamps over here. I'm gonna put two on each side, facing opposite directions. I'm gonna fasten it, and then I'm gonna put another nut on top to make sure this nut doesn't come loose, because I have experienced it where you don't, if these aren't, done right you just lose steering and you've got to get the emergency tiller out so anything we can do now to make it easier will be easier now what Orlando has done he has turned the cog all the way let's say clockwise to the maximum of the chain length before the chain runs out on the port side. All I'm gonna do now is mark it, drill it, fasten it, and then we can already start working on the other one. Now, of course, it doesn't make sense to have a pulley down here where the maximum of the chain length is, and then the rest to go in front. So we have this other pulley here, which is gonna be fastened up here just to get it out of the way of us. And this one will allow the wire to go all the way to the transom. So we need to figure out where this goes. I've drawn a line square from this one over here, over onto here. And that is where the top pulley is gonna go. The most nerve wracking of everything is finding out where we're gonna drill here. And in our case, I'm just gonna literally follow the line, the shortest line from here to the transom and the line that it makes. So looking here, it is technically above this support and above this support. However, I don't think that's gonna be feasible and it's gonna to be too difficult to get the system working inside. So we're just gonna pull it about two, what is that? One inch inwards over here 
drill out and drill inwards and we can already pull that rope through to see where we need to put that pulley. This here is one of the pulleys. It is nylon, don't worry, we know. Uh, this one is going to fit here on the transom. I think I'll get it as close to here as possible, like so. So it just needs a little hole that goes literally through there. That lets the wire go through. I think that's about it. After much testing of like turning it and finding the straightest line and the most accessible way of drilling that we don't have to drill through every single frame or the cover board so we can still in future maintain it at least is exactly here. I have made the tiniest of holes already. Olana's gonna try and pull the, push the wire through just so we can do some tests before even making the hole even larger. I don't know. I think it's gonna work, but I'm like, everything can go wrong. The wire didn't fit through the first hole, which is not unexpected. So we've got a slightly bigger one here or the next one up. And this big one actually allows me to dr drill a bit higher as the drill doesn't have to pass under the beam. So we are gonna plug that small hole, which should not be a problem with some wood and epoxy. And this one is gonna be the correct one. And higher is always better because this kind of points upwards into the cover board and I'm not gonna drill into the cover board. So we're trying to go under that as high as possible. And this allows it to go higher. Oh, we can actually pull it all the way through because it's already fastened on the other side. All the way through. Literally, the first test is he, Orlando is now holding the wheel or at least the axle of the wheel so it's staying straight. So if I pull this, I can pull it as tight as I want, fasten it, and if he turns right, the rudder should move. Let's find out. Very quickly fastened on here, and no, it doesn't have a pulley, so it will rub onto the wood. However, this is literally, we're doing it once, twice, well, until we're sick of it. And this is the first test. Bye! Bye. How cool is that? The first official right turn or starboard turn of the boat. That is very, very cool. I was going to cut this wire, but I think if I already drill in this side already, that we can already pull that side through and we might not have to cut and it gives us a lot more extra wire to play around with. And I don't know if you can see over there, it's very dark clouds, so I want to do it very quickly. So let's not wait because the rest is in the engine room and we can do that when it rains. It's gone through the quadrant here. All I'm going to do now is pass it through here and see if somehow we can make it all the way to the chain, the motorbike chain, without having to cut it yet because that seriously gives us loads of means to play around with the length of the ropes. Yeah, it's already going. Hang on, of course I'm not the only one working on this boat. Let's go and see what everyone else is doing.
All we need now are two more pulleys, one to go here, one to go there. I'm just gonna put them in place now and we can pull the wire through and connect it at the start again or at the end, whatever you want. One, done. Let me get this straight for you guys. We've got it coming from the starboard side of the boat, which is to turn right when that tightens. We've got it going through two bronze pulleys. For now, it's going straight out the transom and it's connected to the quadrant. It's gone around the quadrant. We haven't cut anything yet. In through the port side, through one pulley that's up there, through another pulley that's here to make sure it doesn't get in the way of us getting down the uh, entrance hatch. And now we're gonna work on the same over there by the, under the steering wheel with the bronze pulleys. Then we'll tighten it at the back and cut it at the back, leaving some extra if necessary. And then we've got all the time in the world to play around with moving stuff around if we need to, but I think it's working pretty sweet and soon we can bring the steering wheel in as well. Now the last step to do before we can actually tighten it, these two go here. Two of these in place, two up there in place, two going to the port side part of the quadrant, all in place, all tightened. All we need to do now is go to the uh, quadrant again, fix that up a bit, and then we can, because like here it's slightly touching, so we might need to move this back a bit, but I'm very, very happy with all of this. Maybe even just open this up, I don't know. This was all just the first system. Later we can make the little fine adjustments. So we're gonna go back now and work on the quadrant a bit. I think we can have it turning left and right today. Okay, we're gonna do a test up there just to see if it turns. Still don't have a steering wheel yet, it will go faster. Bye! How cool is that? As you can see, these beautiful columns we have here, these spindles, they're looking super nice. But they're a bit scruffy. They need to be sanded and revarnished to look better. This shape is a bit annoying to sand though. That's why I'm gonna put it back on the leg. Some of you may argue that the next part of our steering system is a very crucial part. However, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna put it in place now, just so it's not in the way in our house anymore or anywhere. So let's put it in place and see if we need to use it in future or not. If we don't, who knows? 
What do you guys think? Are we gonna need it or not? Either way, I think we'll need it more than all this. I think we've managed to keep all the components to make this work. If you see some changes around here, the pilot house area, a lot has been going on simultaneously. Uh, maybe in the future you'll see it or we'll do a little throwback of what's happening here. But the start of this show, the center of attention is going to be our steering wheel, which has been a very nice piece of decorative furniture leaning against the wall in our living room for now, which was also very nice. Unfortunately, or well, fortunately, it's not going to be there anymore. I don't know if it has a front or a back. I think it does. How about that? I'm not going to start spinning it too much now because we still need the pulleys everywhere but this is nice in place and I love this steering wheel. It's like those ones that you see as decorations and you can always imagine what would a ship look like that has a steering wheel like this and now you have a good idea and I absolutely love it. And honestly I think this is one of the reasons why we ended up buying this boat, this and the round table outside and the long bow sprit, you know like. being sanded on the lay they were ready to be revarnished so here I am they have the first layer of varnish I already love how the varnish makes the grain of the wood pop I think they're looking super pretty but of course we still need to go a couple more layers so it's shinier and then continue finishing this that that everything for well, now we have a hole there with the steel wire going through it and that is not the ideal situation because it's going to rub on the wood and the hole is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until we have a stripe cut through our transom. So we do have pulleys. These pulleys are going to go, let me see here, it's going to guide the wire to this quadrant over here. Now my plan now is to get the line from the quadrant up to here and get this pulley to receive the wire at the perfect angle so it's not rubbing too low or too high so it's staying so it sits nicely in the middle of this pulley so I'm just gonna fiddle around with this a bit and also if I need to I'll have to chip chisel into the transom a bit just to lower it I think that might be the worst case scenario this is what I have so far that represents this the depth of two and a half centimeters is literally what's sticking out on that side of the pulley which is what I have to chisel in That'll be the first thing and then later I'm going to chisel into this if necessary to change the angle.
This is now done. I've made it as small as possible so it wouldn't rub against the wheel or anything. This fits nicely in here. However, if we tighten this steel wire over here, this means the pulley has to be pointing up slightly, very, very slightly. So I'm gonna just dig into the uh, transom a bit to make sure it sits a bit higher, not much. It's just, I wanna get this thing completely perfect in line and I don't want it rubbing incorrectly on a pulley. I think the next step is for me to install it. I'm gonna do everything dry right now. Later I can epoxy it all and Seeker flex it all, but for now, I want to just keep testing and make sure it's right to then make sure we can install it permanently. First one is in place. I've put one uh, lug screw in it already, it spins nice and freely as well which I am very happy about. Next thing we have to do is pull the wire through which Rafa is going to do right now and then we can just see if it's in the right place. They're very big screws so I hope it is in the right place because otherwise I'm going to have to fill it and re-drill with the, well fill it with epoxy and re-drill but really this should be good. First one is in place with the wire through and I think the angle is looking splendid. Look at that. Now we're going to work on the other side, so I'm just going to take these measurements and bring them over. I like to use it. I think I'm going to use the router to dig the first hole to fit the wheel through, and then the rest. I think I'll just do this soon with the chisel. At this point, I don't think there's much more I can do until the line's completely tight and this is in place. So, second one's going in. I'm gonna make one hole, drill it, fasten it, and then we can kind of start tightening all the lines and see if the angle's right and all that. So, yeah, and then later I would really like to change this for a metal instead of a nylon. But for the test, it's gonna be good because this is gonna be the same size as the one that we're gonna make after. We've got some of these. I don't know what the name is. Comment below so you can tell me what they are. I'm gonna fasten these with the steel wire to this quadrant with a shackle on each side. And it should be completely ready, this system. Except for, of course, the epoxying and the secret flex that we're gonna apply. If you guys have any suggestions about this, by the way, let us know, because it's something we can always work on and adjust. Like, we wanna replace the nylon with stainless steel, for example. Uh, is the wire thick enough? It's six millimeters, by the way. Whatever. Any suggestions, comment below, because we are very happy to hear from you and make adjustments based on that. Well, without further ado, let's get this done. We've got one wire clamp on it for now. We've got the shackle and we've got this thing, which you guys are going to let me know what it's called so I can remember. So I'm going to shout to Oily that he can start turning the wheel. We'll have a look out here what it looks like and then we'll go up and see what it looks like there as well. Oily! Okay. Bye, Jivira! From down here, it looks like it's turning very smoothly. I'm very happy with that. Let's go and have a look upstairs and really hope it's not heavy. Otherwise, we're gonna have to change the cog to a smaller one, but that's also not an issue. And that's the middle. I think we will resort to a smaller cog, but for now, this whole rudder system is ready. I am so happy that we have this whole circuit done circuit being the axle on the steering wheel connected to that gearing ratio connected to the cog connected to the chain connected to the steel wire going through pulleys all the way to the rudder it turns super smoothly it's all going past the pulley there's no friction on wood all the pulleys are nice and straight 
and the rudder axle is also very nicely loose and moving. I wouldn't call this a 100% wrap because there's a lot of fine tuning we would like to do. Even though it does move very smoothly, I think the weight is too heavy for it not to be in the water yet. We want to make a couple of changes still, which is gonna be, it shouldn't be difficult as the whole system is ready. The main change we would like to make is the cog that we placed is slightly too big. It is a bit bigger than the axle or the diameter that we had the ropes wrapped around in the beginning. Making it bigger means we have a different ratio, which means we have to turn this wheel less times for the rudder to reach the maximum turning angle. That might seem good in some ways, however, it does make the steering a lot heavier. As you can see, we're on the dry and it was already slightly resisting. So we would like to remove that one and place a smaller one on, which will change the ratio, meaning we will have to turn the wheel more each side to make the rudder turn, however, making it a lot easier, especially when we're under sail or when there are waves moving the boat back left and right. So that is the main change we want to make, but that shouldn't be an issue and you will be updated about that very soon. I want to show you one more nice thing about this rudder and that is all this over here. Thank you so much Bruce and Hans for joining us on Patreon. Welcome to the crew. Also Roman and Antoinette, thanks so much for the support through PayPal and thanks so much Alan, Paul, Duane, Mr. Justin Cruz, Robert and Joseph for hitting that super thanks button on YouTube. You guys mean everything to us. Thanks all for the support. It won't be possible without you. Thanks everyone who subscribed to the channel and also click that like button. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Right here.